Breaking news, everyone. We have major changes coming to the NCAA that I want to get into right now. So without further ado, I'm Ron Tucker with Heavyweight Nation, and let's get into these rule changes. With these rule changes, there is one in particular that everyone is talking about, and that is the three-point takedown. Two-point takedowns have been a part of wrestling for a very long time now, and the NCAA decided that it was finally time for a change. As we head into next year, we are going to be seeing three-point takedowns instead of the original two-point that we have all been so uh, accustomed to over the years. What this is meaning is, is that there's going to be more offensive points for wrestlers to go out there and get, but there are some other rules that are going to be implicated with this uh, as well. One of those being the two-hand touch rule. And it states as, eliminating the hand touch takedown also was approved by the panel. Rules committee members think demonstrating control is an important component of college wrestling, so it made sense to eliminate the hand touch takedown in favor of a single requirement for all takedowns. This is going to make getting a takedown harder for a lot of people. Getting people to their hands was a quick and easy takedown, and then most times wrestlers would get out. Sometimes they would be brought back down to the mat, but in this case, now wrestlers are going to have to bring their opponent all the way down to their knees in order for that to be considered a takedown. Another rule that is being initiated is a rule that we were all familiar with a couple of years ago, which is the three-point near fall. We still will have the two-point near fall and the four-point near fall, but now there will be the addition of the three-point near fall, giving wrestlers a lot of different variations of ways to score points. Um, before, if you got a three count, you were just getting two back points. Uh, now, if you get a three count, you are going to get three near fall. With these changes for the takedown, three-point takedown, and the other rules revolving around it, there are going to be some serious implications on the future of wrestling and exactly the direction that it goes. I'm going to talk about a couple of them and exactly what I see happening as we head forward with these new rule changes. The first being how many points are going to be scored in matches. Um, we've seen very high scoring matches in the past. I think we're going to see even more high scoring matches in the future. I think that the amount of technical falls and matches are going to elevate. Um, I think schools are going to have new records, uh, record holders in terms of technical falls. I think uh, the main thing that people are going to be doing this year are going to be trying to score points with these new rule changes. Um, I see pinfalls becoming less and less um, as these points are, uh, as the takedown gets up to three points and we add on the three point near fall. Um, I I do think that um, the one the one hitch in this rule uh, for the offensive side is going to be that two hand touch or the hand touch rule. Um, bringing a wrestler all the way down to their knees is a lot more difficult than bringing them down to their hands. Some wrestlers are very good in that tripod position, not letting not going down to their knees and keeping uh, up on their uh, hands and their feet. So I do think that's going to throw a wrench in there, but. Uh, overall, the offensive uh, wrestling that we're going to see is going to be high. It's going to be chaotic. I think that this year we're not going to see um, as many low scoring matches that we, as we've seen before. I also want to see how this plays out with the overtime rules. When we get to sudden victory and we have wrestlers that are, um, you know, going into that top bottom sudden victory positions. And, you know, before, if the takedown was two points, a wrestler would get an escape, uh, possibly get taken down. But getting another quick escape could keep them in the match. Now with this three point takedown, I don't know if that's going to be the same case. I do think that it would be a lot harder for a wrestler to do that in a case that they were to escape, uh, get taken down and get another quick escape at that point they're still going to be down by one point so it's going to put them in a even bigger hole meaning that if you get a takedown in those sudden victory um periods that you're almost guaranteeing yourself a win as long as you can control the rest of the match and make sure you know that no crazy points are awarded and one little fun thing that I'm I'm going to be worry, uh, worrying about is is what are we going to be calling it? Um, you know, we we've been calling it two for so long. Get a takedown. It's two. But, you know, now with it changing to three, I mean, we're going to start sounding like an NBA game. I don't know. But I think, you know, the three point takedown is still going to be very, very beneficial. Um, and I think it's going to create a lot of exciting matches in the future. And there were other rules that were implemented other than the three-point takedown and the other rules that were uh, revolving that. We do have a few others that I want to go into, so let's get into that really quickly. One rule that stood out to me not uh, surrounding uh, the three-point takedown was the new rule uh, with refs 
allowing a continuation even with an illegal hold being called. Um, so this meaning that if someone, the top man, were to have a uh, locked hands position, um, the referee could allow the wrestling to continue instead of stopping and then awarding the bottom man a point. He can award the bottom man a point and continue wrestling, giving um, that bottom man a, an attempt to escape because in some cases, in most cases, uh, when wrestlers lock their hands, it's usually because the bottom man is about to get out. So in that case, the continuation of wrestling would allow that bottom man to at least have a chance at getting out. So I think that this rule is going to benefit a lot of those wrestlers on bottom, um, those wrestlers that uh, are very good at putting their opponents in dangerous positions um, to put themselves in um, uncomfortable positions and make mistakes. Um, and then for those people that do make mistakes, it's going to show um, more often uh, because now with the continuation of wrestling, um, you know, now you're going to be giving up a point while also giving up an escape point. So it's kind of going to be interesting to see exactly how that plays out. One other rule that I want to kind of talk about that's kind of confusing me. I, I want to see it in action and see it live and kind of see how it's going to be called. But it says here that the current mandatory five second count for the waist ankle ride will be... Um, expanded to include all situations and when the top man grabs the ankle at all. So with that, I'm kind of interested in see exactly how that plays out. Is that going to be, you know, immediately when you drop to a single leg, if the wrestler starts getting up, um, you know, when, when, when does this rule start to get implemented? When do we see this five second count starting? Um, that's going to be interesting. I think that this rule is going to create some drama uh, amongst coaches, amongst wrestlers uh, within the within the NCAA. So it's going to be interesting, but I think that it could be a good rule in making sure that the top man is staying offensive and make sure that they're not just trying to um, block off their opponent from doing anything. And the last rule I kind of want to go into detail about is going to be the coach's video reviews. Um, so before, if a coach had a delayed video review, meaning if he threw out the big brick or made a challenge um, concerning some action within the match, uh, and if it was late, it was known as a control of the mat violation. Now it's going to be a um, loss of that video review. So now coaches are going to have to actually um, either trust their instincts or they're just going to have to hesitate and maybe not throw that brick um, and maybe trust the wrestler. But it's going to be interesting because coaches are going to have to go, you know, exactly with, with the first thought. If they're going to think, oh, let's throw that out there. They're going to have to throw it out there instead of, you know, trying to think, do I do it? Do I not do it? Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out amongst certain matches, those high uh, intense matches. Um, I think that it could be beneficial, less stoppage in the matches, meaning coaches may not throw the brick out there uh, as often, but it could also mean that the coaches may throw the brick, brick more often due to them not wanting to hesitate, not wanting to miss an opportunity. Um, so we'll see how that works out in the future. There were some other rules that were implemented other than the ones that I talked about today. If you want to go see what those are, go head over to Heavyweight Nation's Instagram or Twitter. They should have all the information that you need regarding those changes made by the NCAA.